are somehow familiar to me or so eager to know because uh, so these are relevant topics are selected here and very very esteemed eminent personalities are here so having a great profile because i although you are not profile is not really a proper life but i know is uh, going to be uh, discussed in the coming sessions and uh, this is a college all of us know don bosco college is uh, primarily situated in a very uh, important uh, strategically important place this is the heart of the roman town capital and nearby as i said earlier nagarjuna city secretary is here is very accessible by it so in all aspects this seminar is well organized and uh, well thought and well planned and in the coming two days also i think i hope things will go the way we expect so let me take this opportunity to appreciate the organizers for this uh, wonderful seminar this is really need of the hour why i am saying the need of the hour because i have no paper to present so i will take few minutes for few i will not uh, test your patience anyway so this uh, particular occasion i wanted to take your attention to some of my few experience few experience means it may not be so relevant to you but uh, since i am asked to be here just i am trying to uh, touch here at there so you may get some some insight at see way back in 2011 when i went to upsc interview all of us know that civil service examination the last stage is the upsc interview before interview something known as uh, preliminary examination then we need to write mains so upsc interview is a moment normally it takes uh, 20 to 25 minutes sometimes it may go beyond a couple of hours see what is important so that upsc interview you know you have been <coughs> not any interview from the upsc interview why upsc interview is important because it is considered to be one of the important examination in, in in india to an extent in the world also so the point here suppose uh, the department of history and archaeology now in the university the nagar scholars association of mindit and the nagaland international research center for taking interest in this seminar and giving your support in various ways we also have uh, a number of this eminent academicians the advisory committee is very happy that he could make out his time to come to to revisit nagaland again and also help out uh, with his paper as a resource person yesterday and today he is going to chair this session and today our resource person for the day is uh, dr tajul tabi he is an associate professor in the department of history uh, rajiv gandhi university a central university at itanagar and so let's uh, and then we have five paper presenters in the morning session so today also we hope that we will be having a very fruitful uh, interaction on the various topic that is going to be presented by the paper presenters wishing you all the uh, best for your paper on which my focus is carbo um, i also belong to that title it used to be uh, um, ours is a very segmentary society that way in, in the days before our present times how soon was the unit of um, basic political unit about that there is no authority so a house or a household uh, used to be the basic unit of society and was independent and autonomous uh, so there was no society beyond that so keeping that in mind uh, I, i have titled it similarly for ladies strict gender dimension to uh, housing where 
from men will enter and women clearly demarcated. So this one, um, east facing or south facing, would be the men's uh, prerogative. That side, uh, ladies. And on the ladies' corner itself, uh, during marriage, uh, when huge marriage ritual is done, not all marriages, with big one, uh, uh, temporary ladder is raised. So that the is called, I call it um, bridal is there. Temporary one, for that purpose only, the bride will exit from there. So that, that one is that side. The door will be there, there are two doors. Then the, is, that is the focus there, central uh, fireplace. It's again rectangular, uh, square, this. Then and the four sides, this side the guest will uh, take. That side is for the, uh, given the local names also there, uh, it's not uh, maybe family elders. That side is the west or north facing, facing is for the um, ladies exclusively. And this side is for youngsters. They call it now long house. Uh, it is more, uh, it can be more, it's more prevalent in Nishi and Nishmi areas, in the Bangali and in the western part of the state. In Galo areas, uh, so called long houses are, they have disappeared. I was born into a long house that way, if, if one can call it long house, more than one hearth or fireplace, meaning more than one couple, they stay, sometimes 10 to 15 years. Fireplaces. So this have the same here. So the, the, the basic design is same. So some of the highlights which I wanted to focus was a sense of direction or spatial consciousness, which I did some literature review also. So um, the if, if you read literature, the mountains in Arunachal are north to south facing. The reason why uh, the anthropological survey of India has done the purpose of my present study is to explore the need and importance of technology towards the 21st century tribal school children community in India. Next. These are the objectives. Basically, uh, to know about tribal education and its significance, and finally, to explore the indigenous communities with meaningful access to technology towards their self growth and development. Yes, there are other ways of the without technology, as we keep on saying that uh, uh, teacher cannot be replaced by technology. Yes, we can agree. But on the other side, what we want to have a look is with the help of the technology. As we know that V, A, K model, visual, auditory, kinesthetics model. So in this case, A, V, audio, visual, how it is important for a particular student. My dear audience, as we know that uh, a class consisting of uh, 30 students or 40 students, every student having their own personalities, every student having their own attitude, they have their own perception. I like to watch the images, I like to hear, I like to read. So in this case, as a teacher, how you are uh, giving the information, how you are uh, the main target of our, as a classroom teacher is participation of the students. So many ways are there, but a small 5% or 10%, how this technology will be added advantage for our students. That's what uh, we need to have a look. But is it accessible on the top of this? Do we have resources? Do we have infrastructure? Do we have facilities? Where are the funds? Where are the financial burdens are there? How you can see this technology? The world is moving on. Everyone is going towards space or digitalization. In this case, our students are getting technology. We need to think about it. Next, uh, methodology, secondary data, secondary data taken from uh, different resources, <coughs> position papers, journals. Next, definition, some of the small definitions are given, starting with uh, the word tribe is derived from the Latin word tribus, meaning one word. Romans applied the word. Yeah, this is a small you can see here from the slide. Next, next, next. The media of instruction. Instruction is also important. Whenever the communication instruction is given to the students, definitely uh, they can have a participation level is more. Next, a rational of the study. Next, 
Uh, some of the definitions, technology, ICT definition, and finally, education. As we are talking about how this uh, education is uh, very much close to this technology, how these two are related, especially at school level. We, we need to have a look. Next. Uh, these are the types of technology we, we are keep on using everywhere, at its school level, college level, higher education level. The first one is smart boards, classrooms, projectors, and television. Next. As we know that uh, all these smart homes are very important. So classroom management in a discipline wise, in a participation wise, these smart homes plays a very, very important role. Next, uh, classroom species also. Next, uh, projectors, it will uh, enrich the students' learning participation so that uh, students' involvement will be there. Their attraction toward the subject, teacher can grab the students' attention if you are using the technology at most. As I told you, every class having average students, below average students, toppers, excellent students, all are equal for a teacher. But my intention is to give the lecture, to give the instruction, teaching, methods, skills, whatever it may be in an equal way. That is what I am trying here. Next, uh, television is also one of the important uh, useful technology, especially for the primary education and middle level school education. Next. Enhance teaching and learning. This is what I want. I need to improve my teaching. I need to uh, give more information to the students. Okay, use the ICTs, use the technology. Next, literature review. Some of the literature review in uh, India and abroad, where uh, the role of technology, especially for the tribal school children, there's a lot of studies are done. Some information is given. Next, uh, this is also and uh, musical language. So. Somewhat, I got this dystopic image of the Northeast in the national imaginary and its political repercussions, which might be contrasted by encouraging the development of culturally diverse artistic outputs and thus allowing the indigenous people to perceive themselves as native citizens. And you know, indigenous cinema, this offer not only a means of presenting oppositional gauges, and uh, counter and, and see, uh, so we can just say that uh, being pushed into a linguistic and visual ghetto, the indigenous people are talked about or totally silenced at time, depicted as charming and exotic, as primitive and superstitious or as violent and untamed. So this fabrication of a community and of political subjects in mainstream Indian cinema tends towards a reductionist policy of relegating disadvantageous groups such as those listed in the scheduled castes and the scheduled tribes. So, you know, while cinemas in major regional languages such as Tamil, let it be Tamil or Bengali, for example, have a large number of potential spectators and so present more chances of reasserting their languages, cultural capitals and worldviews. So cinemas in tribal languages, I believe, face greater challenges. Filmmakers who decide to shoot a film in a tribal language may be sometimes be unable to find a producer. And therefore, having to rely on a very low budget to make a film that might never be screened or might alienate its potential audience uh, because it is embedded in an alien culture and does not employ the narrative and stylistic devices to many more Hindi language films. So, despite many difficulties, I believe more and more independent filmmakers are producing films that employ different languages and multi-visionary perspectives, uh, largely thanks to the relatively low cost of digital production houses this time. Uh, we all know that it's not like earlier when we had to shoot and then we had to ca call cut and you know the, there was this um, time constraint and that budget is also involved but now with the digital uh, inclusion, digital production it's completely different. So these works construct local counter hegemonic narratives in order to debunk the homogenizing counter insurgent images of Hindi language films to the strategic use of oppositional gauges and the creation of a multilingual cinematic landscape. I think I'm not taking much, how much I have left, sir? 
derived from the same common word because Machang connotes an elevated temple platform, Salam, which was an integral part of Moro for the purpose of public meeting and all other outer activities of the Moro. All different tribes uh, called it differently and the Aus call it as Arichu. Ar or Arir means enemy and Chu or Chupang means to capture, overpower, dominate. Thus, Arichu can be defined as a means to overpower enemy. Forms of communication basically refer to <coughs> types or kinds of communication which humans have developed over time. In the context of moral, forms of communication like storytelling, proverbs and sayings, songs and tenses and other symbolic representations will be looked into. Storytelling was one of the most important forms of communication in the moral, which was limited to specific occasions. The stories were told in informal settings, especially almost every night by the elders of Morong uh, or by some elderly men who were knowledgeable and skilled storytellers. In all traditional society, the stories were transmitted from generation verbally as in any other oral cultures. The stories were narrated not just for the sake of entertainment but played a sustaining role in maintaining social functions. It created a bond of solidarity inside the community <coughs> circles there was also an educational function for the young members of the community. It tells about our social values, moral and ethical life. It, is also, it also reflects our customary laws, rights, and taboo. Every story carries a moral lesson for the listeners. Most of the old stories were about the heroes of the village, love stories, war, conquest, story of, with moral lesson. No particular training was given to an any individual to memorize, but there was no professional storytellers, but a few old men and women who were amongst the most skilled narrators because of their special ability and interest in stories. So um, these old men and women, those who conserved these stories, they were regarded highly in the society. <coughs> The elders in the moral exhorted the younger members about ethical values of life, like use of power, um, honesty, and other moral principles, stories, instead of giving just simple talk, just a simple talk. The use of saying and proverbs in private conversations or in public communication was another effective form of communication in moral life. The peculiarity of our saying is that it is used coupled with a short story, and only if the listener was familiar with the story behind will the saying make sense, will make sense. I've given some story here, but due to time constraint, I won't be able to narrate that. Proverbs. Where you can come to building of the world and the symbolic representation. That's a core of your paper idea. Yeah, closer, please. Building of moral and the symbolic oh, yes. Okay. Building of moral and symbolic representations. The high and magnificent moral building itself was very symbolic because it represented the strength of their villages as well as their skills and architecture. When a new village was established, a suitable site for the moral was first chosen. There was one or more moral in every our village according to the size and population of the village. It was common practice to construct a moral at the entrance of the village. The moral was often 50 feet long and 20 feet broad, with a front chapel 30 feet above the ground. Except for tiny doors at the back and front, the moral was entirely close and dark. The moral had both eaves, we call it kit, and protecting wall, we call it zumong. The eaves of the thatched roofs rolled near the road, rolls down near the ground. The wall are made of solid temple pieces fixed in the crown very close to one another called Simo, tightened with camp ropes in order to escape the sudden spear cross at night. On entering the front door, there is a structure made of temple making sticks with the wooden pins extending from one side to the other to another. The height of this structure is about five meters to prevent the enemies not to cross over quickly. The front pillar, usually a huge log, is a distance of about two meters from the front door. Uh, was elaborated on the northeastern part of India, and um, so.
So we'll straight go into what is jumbo or what is morong in general context. If we are to go by a textual definition of what jumbo is or what morong is, it is a traditional youth dormitory or known as a village card house or a traditional or cultural building. That is the textual definition of morong. And like the Wafanaka, it has to be noted here that the youth dormitory is a social practice common to almost all the Naga tribes having different nomenclature in life. The Angamis, the Koli as Kichuki, the Bat by the Konyaks, Ariju by the Aos, Abuki by the Sumis, so on and so forth. The Chumbo, a bachelor dormitory system, is one that occupied a very important part in the history of the locals. And the size of the chumbo is varied from village to village, ranging from 20 feet breadth to 40 feet in length, depending on the village population. And it is the biggest building that is uh, available in the village. Usually, every Lota village was divided into sectors or uh, kills, and in each of the kills, it had a common bachelor house or chumbo. And at the best of these posts, that is chumbo are the Oha stones on which the good fortune of the chumbo depends and it is used to be fastened a piece of skin from the first head taken after a new chumbo is built. A piece of skin called Nze Lama or in English boss warmer was believed to bring strength to the post and loved to the village. So the nomenclature of chumbo is a mere metometry, a bachelor house, a cultural or a traditional building do not justify the deeply rooted meaning of what Chumbo actually is. And therefore, this paper, Unfathomable Nota Naga Chumbo, is an attempt to redefine, reconstruct, and re examine Chumbo and to deliver genuine critique to this traditional institution called Chumbo in its origin. In the last session of this workshop, um, as announced, uh, we have Professor Zavise Rube, who will enlighten us on Naga Indigenous Technology of Learning. After his presentation, we have research scholars uh, Gideon Kasau, R. Arang Bakona, S. J. Levicure, and Kido Tosu, who will be presenting after his uh, presentation. Yes. Roles of uh, the modern uh, com uh, educational practices also we have uh, the Nagas have practiced since thousand years ago. For example, the uh, uh, project method, the um, project method, and then the group uh, 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 discussion, the focus group discussion method of uh, learning, all these are being practiced by the Naga uh, indigenous people. And we rely on the first-hand knowledge to survive the, in the environment and we depend on the nature. Nature gives lots of uh, learning, lots of wisdom, lots of uh, knowledge and uh, we depend on the nature and we, we are the practitioners of naturalism. We are the naturalist and we depend lots of uh, our journalists. We depend lots of uh, our knowledge from plants, animals and birds and to understand different seasons, the sun and the moon and the stars were used to uh, study the time when we were young, 50 years ago. 50 years ago when we were young, that time we did not have watch, but we rely on the sun, the moon, and the, the plants, especially the uh, banana uh, plants. We cut this and then we measure how it grows and whether it's time for us to take lunch. All this we de depend and uh, Nagas, they're really the naturalists and we learn lots of uh, uh, things, languages, and lots of knowledge through nature. 
So this is uh, one, and therefore I have a strong opinion that in order to preserve our knowledge, we have to preserve our nature. Otherwise, whatever nature I have seen 50 years ago, 55 years ago, is already gone. And my children, my uh, younger generation, they do not have the language of those nature. They have lost so many uh, languages, so many things, just simply because they have lost their nature. So we this, uh, in, simply our knowledge can be destroyed by destruction of the nature. And Nagas also a very peace-loving people. Uh, when we were young, you know, we don't want people to disturb us. You, during the enjoyment, uh, festivals and all, we really, uh, the society is being taught, was taught to remain peaceful, to uh, see the uh, maximum happiness. So the nature of peace, loving, no, has generated a lot of knowledge. For example, our people, as we compare, as I go across the country, so many cities I visited, and uh, I have stayed there weeks together, interacted, you know. Then we people are more humiliate, uh, having more humility, more having the, more understanding. We want to come closer to the people, to the heart. We have more love, empathy, sympathy. All these are because we, we are given by the these all qualities are being given certainly by the our sense of nature of being uh, <coughs> of uh, peace lovers, peace lovers. Another one, I'm a, a, a counseling psychologist, so I practice, and then I found that uh, in Nagas have practiced a unique culture of dealing with emotions. I have done, I have collecting the data and we are undergoing a research now how Naga's uh, way of dealing emotions. Lots of uh, emotions like uh, according to my understanding from uh, literature review, serious cultivation is most effective among the people living in the Indian mountainous regions where expeditions are built from uh, hill spots to provide the largest area for cultivation. China, Japan, Philippines, Africa, Mediterranean Basin, and this of South America, areas of Australia, and Southeast Asia are some of the regions that practice Philippine cultivation. Uh, among those Philippines and Southeast Asian regions have similarities in their practices with this uh, present urban study. Uh, the preparation attempt to learn the traditional way of Philippine cultivation, taking your urban village under practice in Philippine region, uh, where Philippine cultivation is built in practice in every household in the village. Uh, is associated with this cultivation. Uh, though different trees have their own significance in different aspects, it circles mostly around agricultural activities. Uh, first is the green year, held in the month of November, or January, uh, before starting their field work. Kut Oye, held in the month of July, after the generation of rice. Chodanye, he's uh, associated with clearing and maintenance of crop uh, parts leading to their field, having a lot of other. After the, uh, which is active among the benefits groups, people help after the harvest in the month of November. Uh, though this is not uh, in practice, uh, this effect is grows all year round, mostly to keep the uncles in, as it demands intensive labor. <coughs> These are the steps of both cultivation. Okay, soil of field, start from January to March, start after, soil of high seeds, February, to put the new casting and the new soil of water, May and June, Kushishi, Kushishi leveling of my report and sanitation of rice, June to July, to push the sanitation of rice. Uh, usually, step four and five are done on the same day. To cook the clearing of trees at the very part. 
So the head of the delegation, as it varies from the uh, administrative system, are the ones who decide on which block to be cultivated. Announcements are made by Kel Morongs or a messenger, and rotational bases serve as an indication to specific occasion, events, or birth, and sometimes even it leads to the times of headhunting wars. Now, this is a field area which is from the Longa district and preparation and sowing of taro goes in this manner. Lengthy and labor intensive process. It begins around November and continues till February the following year, which includes the clearing of forest, burning, preparing and sowing. Then taro seems to be the first crop sown in the newly tilled fields. Young birds of taro worms are sliced or separated from the mother corn and planted in vertical position. Bamboo strips are laid down where taro will be sowed or will be the first plant to be sowed in the new field as it plays the role. Uh, these bamboo strips they play the role of preventing lens from erosions and also from uh, as a form of pouring manure naturally on the stumps of taro plant. To nature, uh, to nurture its growth, uh, especially when it rains. Then, sowing also associated with the first seed sower, and no one was allowed to sow seeds before him. And if anyone does it, then there is a huge fine. So, people in those days they did not have the audacity or the intensity of breaking the rules which were set by the village. And this is a scene. You can see the dark clouds over there. This is a smoke which was created by the burning of the newly cleared forest in Mon district. Then these are the tools, the current day tools that are being used by the people of both uh, Mon and Nongle district. Then looking at the tools, we have basically normal tools were used, such as pole, scrapper, and the pick of bamboo for sealing, clearing of weights. Then this period marks, especially when it comes to tools, we are also talking about the clearing of weights. And if this period marks, the time of peer groups working together, taking turns in their own respective fields, in clearing widths, and also adding softer soils to taro plants as well as to other crops. And when we look at the harvest, it begins by November and goes till the following year's February. Some taro leaves are stored from the first, uh, are harvested from the first three months of the planting. This period marks the time of admirers and engaged couples, so also the society to bring together the taro harvest was done mostly by individual families. After harvest, certain rituals are done to praise God for a rich harvest. Pungo villages performs a ritual by hanging ki tong. Uh, tong is the name of uh, taro, okay. and, uh, which is used by the tong. And tiang or teng is a name which is used by the Panya people to address taro. Uh, this key tong is considered to be one of the most popular uh, taro in the Longland district. 
and if, if you happen to visit any of the Pongo uh, village, any day, any fine day, they will give you with this <coughs> form in the season. Uh, on the tip of a bamboo pole, and uh, for pom, certain flower forms are left for left harvest. And but the konyaks or the konyaks, they harvest almost all the corms. And in most cases, corms harvested will be stored first at the hut constructed in the field, after which it will be carried to their homes. Then uh, words such as enough or go away are forbidden to speak in times of harvest, because they say that. It, the, the, the very word go away or enough will chase away the blessings in the fields. Then this is the or so hot uh, heating plane. We call it, in local we call it masu. So it is a raised structure measuring around one and a half feet. That is in height and three feet in wide and three feet in length. So this is made out of stone and clay with a provision for five uh, Ovens, uh, that is very clearly uh, reflected in the what is a picture. So, the front opening is for making fire to boil the soil water, and the rear opening is meant for stacking firewoods for warming or heating uh, coal. Sitaba, why? Because uh, this need to be what is a warm or what is a like uh, heated because uh, these woods are freshly cut. Uh, for boiling this as uh, salt water. So in local, uh, lo in local terms, we call it sitaba. Uh, so the length of the guild depends on the capacity and the ability of the manufacturer, that is, on how much he could manage to produce the salt during the season, season of uh, years. So these are the, some uh, tools or implements used uh, in the process of what's the producing salt. Uh, this is, the first one is Bezu, so it is a large, it is a large size spoon made of dry pork. So this is used for fetching salt water from the brine to the salt hut. It is also used for stealing, boiling salt water and transferring it from one or when to the others. The next is Sambo, so it is a contender made, uh, made of wood. So salt water is fed from the brine and uh, stored there for further use. So the next is afu, afu. So it is a jar made of bamboo. So salt water is fed from the well and carried into the hut uh, from this jar. As a sun, the next step is as a sun, that is it, it is made of broken pork. The purpose is to shape the uh, salt. The next is, we call it food. This is made of bamboo with a small size. It is used to mark the line on the uh, salt gags. The next is soup. It is also another jar made out of bamboo. It, is, it, it can be used for carrying of salt water from the well and for storage as well. So the next is uh, a lapid that is an imported urban port from Lalori village. So we uh, locally call them, in local term we call them uh, Alore. So this urban port is, port is used for steaming of salt water and for storage as well. So these are some of the uh, equipment. So method of salt making. Uh, salt is derived from two sources. One from natural and the drone field as the tree grows quickly and help the land fertility. The roots of the elders improve soil fertility by fixing atmospheric nitrogen and its leaf after decomposing also serve as matter for the field. The, village, uh, the villages like Kodawa in Kohima district and Laza means the Boto district uh, practice this technique to a large extent. The most common crops found in June cultivation are like taro, chili, perilla, job steers, maize, rice beans, pumpkins, and gingers. <coughs> June cultivation is considered as hazardous and condemned. Uh, it is However, it is known for natural regeneration, of, natural regeneration of the fertility of the soil, as the cultivated land is left fallow for many years. In the book Naganet Economy and its Elementary Features, features by Yen Nebiro argued that June cultivation a contributor to forest and biodiversity conservation with maintaining agricultural and forest productivity. 
the carbon emission during burning of the jungle for cultivation is compensated by natural regeneration of trees during the period fallow period. In terrace cultivation, the terrace cultivation and its methods, uh, the terrace cultivation is a settled cultivation practiced by Angamis and Chagasan tribes to a large extent, as water play a main role in this cultivation. It is also known as Pani uh, Kepi, Pani which means water, Kepi which means fill in Nagamis. Uh, <clears throat> the, the then Deputy Commissioner of Nagamis, Judge Hadden, uh, described in his writing that the, Angami, the Angamis have the knowledge and tools to successfully practice terrace cultivation. The source from Nagamis State Archive on the Naga village it always said that the terrace cultivation method was adopted from the Manipuris by the Nagas. And this knowledge has been passed on from generation to generations. <clears throat> the procedures for terrace cultivation starts by selection of land where there is availability of water, uh, water source, as rain alone cannot suffice the field. After the selection of the land, the, la the land is cut in the form of steers where the water canals are attached to it, uh, so that uh, the water will flow timely from one steer to another steers. The puddling of soil is done manually with primitive tools, making the field ready for the new samplings of plants to be planted. The transplanting, transplanting of nursery plants to the main field usually begins in July, and harvesting is done starting from November. There are two main types of terrace uh, cultivation. The first is dry terrace cultivation, where water is given uh, only during the growing period of the paddy, that is from June to October and water is drained out and allowed to remain dry from November till next uh, June. Double cropping system is done in dry uh, terrace cultivation, which helps the farmers to produce surplus and also helps them to generate income by selling the surplus crops. Uh, the crops such as cabbage, mustard leaves, uh, potatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes, etc. are grown after the paddy has been uh, harvested. The second type of cultivation is wet terrace cultivation. In this type of cultivation, water is allowed to remain in the field throughout the year. In this field, the eatable aquatic life are also preserved and rare for consumption as well as for sale. These two days, we got an opportunity to come over here, to listen, to participate, to deliberate, to communicate some of the best things for the subject. We have vibrant messages given. The portion of knowledge shared by resource persons, they have 25 years, 30 years experience in the field of education, philosophy, history, economics, political science, psychology, whatever the subject you take. It is very fortunate to come from my college where the faculty members are 16 members over there. But I came over here and you all came over here representing your college or school, whatever it may be, or university. So many people are there in your institution. But why you came here? What purpose you came here? What is the objective? Why you are sitting over here? Why, what is the, uh, what is your aim and target to just uh, come over here? The simple thing is to learn, to get some ideas, to get some messages. The organizers, the organizers, Bosco College of, from Kohima, they given an opportunity to get some knowledge or information, which our colleagues not got an opportunity, our friends, whatever it may be. So, the takeaway is, these two golden days and uh, the people group ideas when people meet together, discuss the issue and then uh, it will result in fruitful discussions. And for me, it's a great opportunity of homecoming and to come back and meet my colleagues, Professor Ben, Professor Koshi and Professor Basan and others, you know, and come here. Now, coming down to the topic, uh, of course, papers are due, some papers are uh, due, some uh, are not uh, exactly connected to the theme, I think uh, uh, you can think about that. 
whatever paper you write that must reflect to the theme of the seminar whatever whatever the, what is the theme of the seminar whatever topic you take be it moral be it weaving that the girl has done very well you know weaving she talked about the technology right what, what was the material which was used and then what was the technology used in your weaving like so somehow or the other you need to connect to the theme of the seminar so that is the crux of the matter and then otherwise the rest is okay i think the, i felt good you know coming back here and meeting my friends and then uh, seeing Kohima uh, after 15 years. Thank you. Thank you, sir. If any one of you would like to take time, uh, maybe we'll give time to Professor Diadushi Chamir, Department of History and Archaeology, Nakalini University. Thank you all. Uh, I think this seminar was really you know, insightful as a lot of the speakers have you know, spoke on traditional knowledge systems and also traditional technology. Uh, and I, I also did have a similar you know, seminar which, which was held online last year. And there were a lot of similar issues which were shared and concerns that were shared. And through, through this exercise, what I you know, uh, realized and the feedback that we have been able to receive is that uh, the, the data is very impressive, right? The data is really impressive. But at the same time, when it comes to the epistemological issues which relates with your data, that is where, you know, uh, I, I believe this is not only confined to Northeast Indian scholarship, but this is also, I think, a problematic issue in Indian academia this is this is not actually encouraged this is not actually encouraged among faculties among research scholars so how how does your data so you may senior fellow asian conference shilong Nakalaya, and advisor nagaland international research center for the board of thanks beautifully sum up and recap what has happened uh, in the discussions the interactions that we had yesterday and today uh, my job therefore is just to sort of sum up uh, and give the vote of thanks. Uh, to organize a seminar of this scale uh, requires a dedicated team 